Hi, this is Maya with RICO. This video is a continuation of our last video about structured analytics and email threading. So we're going to focus today on email thread visualization. So when do you use email threads? You use it when you want to look at just the emails that have the full conversation within a branch of an email thread group. You could use it to include additional records so that when you're doing a search or if you're just looking at an individual document, you can tell the whole context and you can get the biggest picture of a conversation. And you can also use it to QC coding across families. So if you're looking for all the responsive documents pertaining to a specific RFP, you can make sure that you've selected all of the documents within a conversation and tag them all as responsive. Or you can do a privilege review and make sure that an entire conversation about a specific topic will be all marked as privileged. And you can also check that documents aren't inconsistently coded across parents and attachments. So from a document list, you can see we already have the email threading display. I made a search. I found some records that are responsive to that search. Now I want to look at them and see where they fall in the conversation. I switched to my email threading view and our email threading display shows us which branch and whether or not it's inclusive. We can automatically tell if it's a reply or a forward. This is a forward, the blue arrow. We have the purple double arrow, that's reply all. We have the inclusiveness, which is the black box, and this document is not inclusive. So for these records, I know that for this branch of the conversation, I only have to look at this document, but for this one, I'm gonna need to find the inclusive email and make sure that I get the full conversation for that branch of the email thread group. Now, if I wanted to pull in the full conversation and I could find that inclusive for this branch, I can do my plus thread group. Check with your case admin to see what that's called. Um, and this brings in all of the entire conversation into this view so we can pop into the whole conversation we can look at these inclusive emails we can skip all of these and we can find that last conversation of the last email in our or in the last record in our list that wasn't inclusive we can find those inclusive items and really reduce our review set from 48 items down to just those few black icons that are our inclusive set so the number of these reflects the different branches of the conversations. So this is our first branch. This is the email that started it all. It looks like we had two different forwards. So there's two branches of the conversation already, and there might even be um, a fourth. So when we are batching out records and we're doing our last in time or email thread suppressed review, we're only going to be looking at these inclusives. So if we are just looking at the individual records in our list, whether we batch them out or we look at them from a saved search, we can get the same information using our thread group related items pane. Looks very much like the last view we were in, only this is going to just show the conversation for this one group. So instead of having three different conversations like in our full view that we had previously, we're actually going to have all of those records just for that one conversation pertaining to this record. So for instance, if we were only looking at our four original items, this would be a way to bring in all of those other parts of our conversation. Now, because I'm a very visual person, I appreciate being able to see the conversations represented as a chart. So I usually navigate over here to the show hide email thread visualization icon. And here it is in full when you mouse over show hide email thread visualization. This returns a table that shows us where our, where our emails reside within that conversation. Now you can navigate within this by clicking the pluses and the minus 
to zoom in and out. You can reset your zoom. You can also use your scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. And you can click and drag once you've zoomed in to navigate around this interface. These numbers at the top are, correspond to the numbers within the view here. And it shows us the levels of our conversation. You can resize the panel by clicking here in the middle and dragging. Now, when we have clicked into a record and we've opened our visualization, it shows us which record we're in with the gray box around the, uh, the email. So here's where we can tell our conversations and the various branches. So here's our number two, which contains all of number one. And here's our second number two, which also contains all of number one. And it's a branch off from the original. And then we've got a little more back and forth, but it's all included in number four. And again, here's number six. Now, we apparently have some missing emails in our data set and Relativity has deduced their existence. So we have a little question mark, that means it's a missing email. And again, we've got our blue arrows, that's our forwards. Here's our reply all, there's a reply. Now, that's a lot. If you've forgotten or if you will forget, and you probably will, because I do all the time, here's our legend. Here's how we get there, the little double arrow icon right here. There's our legend, it's all spelled out. It's very excellent. There's still more though. When we mouse over our emails, we get more information about those just from this view. So even if you didn't have your related items pane open, you've got some more context. This record has no attachments, no duplicate spares, and no other emails. We have the from, the sent, and the number, the document identifier, in this contextual menu. This here is our duplicate spare and other. The chart groups them together, and so it very um, importantly gives us a way to navigate to that record if we needed to look at that duplicate spare. Most importantly is when it's with attachments. So this document has an attachment. You can see that I've clicked into it so you can navigate and it takes you to a review queue much like when you navigate across records in your related items pane. So here is how we see the attachments. We click on the menu and it gives us the list of the nine attachments for this document so we can further navigate to that record to the attachments from this pane if we needed to look at them all. So in addition to showing us the information about the conversation, Relativity also shows us the coding for these records. The highlight field option under display options, once you toggle that and select the field that you want to highlight, um, you can highlight any single choice or yes, no fields can see that our legend updates to give colors for each of the coding choices. Um, here, anything is gray that's not yet been set. Um, anything that's marked need further review, you can see our duplicate spare is marked yellow. Um, that has been marked, needs further review. And here is everything marked responsive. It looks like we did a good job of getting all of the um, inclusive emails marked as responsive. Um, except for this one, we have an alert here. This tells us there is inconsistent coding across these records. There's also inconsistent coding here. So one of them is not marked and this um, duplicate spare is marked, um, needs further review. So we can actually use this edit feature here. You can see it grays out once you select that and we can pick the item we want to mass code. So you can see that we have nine plus items and here's our edit option. Once we select that, it gives us the count of the items we're going to edit. We get our normal mass action panel. So this allows us to code that email and the family, the attachments, as responsive. And once we do that, you can see that our alert is removed and we've successfully coded our last in time emails with responsiveness so everything is being included. We can do this with issues, um, 
with regards to mass coding, you can code whatever field that you want to see. If this was a production that did not include your last in time, um, if you didn't have an agreement to produce just those culmination emails, the inclusive emails, you can mass code all of the other emails within the thread just the same way as well. So other fields you might be able to use for your display options could be confidentiality, um, could have a single choice privilege field for privilege, not privilege. That sort of workflow will work and will help you QC and make sure you get all of the records included in whatever set you're searching for across the family group. Now the last thing I wanted to mention is the structured analytics set. With your display options, if for instance you had email threading run across different sets of documents, you can select which email thread set you want to visualize using the structured analytics set drop down in your display options. Okay, that was a ton of information. Thanks for hanging with me. With email thread visualization, you can streamline your review to cut down documents, those non-inclusives that you don't need to look at. You can pull in records to make sure you have the full set of what you need to look for in your database. Issue tagging, privilege coding, confidentiality designations. And you can give yourself you know, the best understanding of a conversation for the documents that you're looking at. Thanks so much for joining me today. Happy reviewing.